Hey everyone, thanks for joining us again on Clinical Physio. I'm Khalid Maidan. In today's video, we're going to be taking you through passive range of movement testing of the knee joint. The purpose of this is to analyse your patient's movement when active contractile structures are not involved. If you'd like more information behind passive range of movement testing, have a look at our other video which is titled Why Test Passive Range of Movement, which gives you the full clinical reasoning behind these tests. So as to not slow your video down, you won't see us comparing the affected and unaffected knees during this video, but it's vitally important that this is what you do in practice so that you can look for any differences between the two. So, when we're completing our passive range of movement testing, there's three key things we need to look for. Pain, range, and end feel. Let's get into our main video. It's time to get clinical. So now we're going to analyse passive range of movement in terms of knee flexion. For this test, your patient should be placed supine on the plinth, or if they feel more comfortable, you can bring them up into a long sitting position. As a therapist, we would stand on the same side as the leg being tested. However, in this video, I'm actually testing the opposite side, and that's simply so that you can see things more clearly on the video. So in terms of our handling, Start by placing one hand on the posterior thigh, just proximal to the knee joint, and your other hand should be in a C-shape, cupping underneath the Achilles tendon like so. From here, we bring our patient's knee into flexion, and you might find that towards the end of the range, it's easier to bring your uppermost hand from underneath the thigh, round to the inside or the outside, and then to bring your lower hand from the Achilles round to the front of the tibia. Let me show you how we can do that movement in its full, which is like so. Starting with our hands around the posterior aspect of the thigh and the lower leg, and then bringing them both round towards the anterior side. So that's how we complete the movement for passive range of movement of knee flexion. If you have a patient with a heavier leg, where as a therapist we need to generate more power to initiate the movement, you can place your lower hand around the sole of the foot, and that will enable you to use your hand as well as your forward moving body weight to drive properly so that you can really bring your patient's leg up into knee flexion. So now we're going to talk about pain, range and end feel in terms of passive range of movement to knee flexion. So in terms of pain, we are stretching soft tissue structures during passive knee flexion, including the quadriceps muscle, the patella tendon, and also within the joint, the anterior cruciate ligament. Therefore, if people report pain around those different areas, it might be due to that issue. We're also compressing different parts of the meniscus within the medial and lateral joint line, so you can consider these areas too. If patients present to you with osteoarthritis, they may also get pain within knee flexion, particularly if they have a Baker cyst, because within knee flexion at end of range, we're compressing posterior structures such as a Baker cyst. Another important point to mention regarding the ACL when you bring your patient's knee into full knee flexion, if they have an anterior cruciate ligament tear, you may see the condyles of the tibia translate anteriorly because the ACL is torn and therefore is not allowing itself to, uh, to become taut in order to stop the tibia translating anteriorly. Also consider the patella. If you have a patient with a patellofemoral pain syndrome, you may be generating pain during passive knee flexion because the patella is not moving very well within the patellofemoral groove. So in terms of range, texts will vary as to what the uh, accurate uh, range of knee flexion is, but a common one to remember is between zero and 130 degrees. When you're completing your uh, passive movement, it's important to note the range at which any pain occurs, as well as the full range that can be completed during the test. And in terms of end feel, for knee flexion we should expect a soft end feel, because knee flexion is the 
open pack position for the knee joint and therefore any limitation is going to be due to soft tissue structures. However, it's important to note that if you have a patient who presents with osteoarthritis, the end feel may be more hard in its nature. So now we're going to analyze passive range of movement in terms of knee extension. And for this test, your patient and therapist position will be exactly as the same as passive range of movement in terms of knee flexion. So in terms of our handling for this test, you would start your test with your patient's knee in an end range flex position. So we would have one hand stabilizing just proximal to the knee joint on the anterior surface of the femur. And our lower hand will be in a C shape with the middle of our C just proximal to the malleolus. So from here, we'll be able to use our lower hand to control the patient's knee down from fully flexed to a fully extended position. And you might be able to also see that as a therapist, I'm lunging onto my back leg to control the movement too. Once you bring the patient's knee into a zero degree extended position, you can use a hyperextension test, whereby our upper hand is again on the anterior femur, just proximal to the knee joint, and our lower hand is in the same position as it was before. From here, we perform a slow, controlled movement of the knee into hyperextension. And hopefully you can see on the video that I'm laterally flexing my trunk in order to control the movement. So now let's talk about our pain, range, and end feel for passive range of movement testing for knee extension. In terms of pain, knee extension forms the closed pack position for the knee joint. And therefore, during the extension, we will be compressing intra-articular structures such as the menisci. So therefore, if your patient complains of pain around the joint line at uh, particular points of knee extension, particularly end of range, it could be due to compression of an injured meniscus. It may also be that for your osteoarthritic patient, they complain of pain with knee extension for the same reason. In terms of range, we consider the knee extension range from end of range flexion, which is approximately 130 degrees, down towards zero degrees, like so. However, you may find on testing that your patient can demonstrate an element of hyperextension, where their extension goes beyond zero degrees. This could be for a couple of reasons. It could be because your patient presents with hypermobility syndrome. It could be because they have a posterior cruciate ligament injury, which prevents that hard end feel and allows the tibia to translate posteriorly in order to generate hyperextension. However, it also may be because you have a patient who simply has a habit of standing with their knees in a hyperextended position where soft tissue has slackened over time to enable hyperextension on testing. Finally, in terms of end feel. The normal expected end feel for knee extension is a hard end feel as soft tissue structures become taut and the knee joint itself becomes compressed as knee extension is the closed pack position of the knee. However, for your patient who does demonstrate hyperextension, you may find that they have a more soft or elastic end feel because of the soft tissue structures becoming slackened rather than taut. So let's summarize this video on passive range of movement of the knee joint. Complete your passive range of movement testing with your patient in a supine or long sitting position. When completing your passive flexion and extension tests, be aware of your handling for each movement and make sure to compare the affected and unaffected sides. When completing your testing, make a note of pain, range and end feel. And that completes our video on passive range of movement testing of the knee joint. In practice, you would now take your patient's active range of movement findings and compare that to the passive range of movement findings. 
and by doing so it will allow you to make a decision as to whether it's most likely to be contractile or non-contractile structures which are at fault for their condition. You can also use your other test in order to clarify their diagnosis. If you'd like more information on active and passive range of movement testing, head on over to our videos titled Why Test Active Range of Movement? Why Test Passive Range of Movement? And then join us again on Clinical Physio for even more information. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you again soon.